Immediately after the initial announcement of partnership and integration of OpenAI with Microsoft and Azure, which is called Azure OpenAI, we were all waiting for a final and very important piece, which was adding ChatGPT and ChatGPT API inside Azure OpenAI. And the good news is just within a couple of days ago, the announcement has been made and here we are to dig into it. Then let's go. Hello everyone, this is MG and welcome to this video. Well, previously we talked about OpenAI capabilities and how they have been implemented within the ecosystem of Azure, which is called Azure OpenAI. But one of the greatest models that OpenAI has provided, which is ChatGPT, were missed in aspect of how we can utilize this within our applications because there were no API for ChatGPT. But recently OpenAI announced that they have released the API for ChatGPT that you can call it within your code and application to be able to utilize the great capabilities of ChatGPT. And then just a couple of days ago, Microsoft also announced that ChatGPT is now added to Azure OpenAI. That means if you're within Azure ecosystem right now and you have access to Azure OpenAI, you can launch the portal, get access to the playground of Azure OpenAI ChatGPT and even leverage the API within Azure OpenAI for ChatGPT. We can integrate that with any coding application that you have to be able to call ChatGPT plus some complementary features that comes with Azure OpenAI ChatGPT that you can tune the settings of your ChatGPT then you call the model within the API call or through the playground portal. So let's dig in to see how we can get access, how we can certainly enable it and how we can call it and what are the features and setting components that comes with Azure OpenAI ChatGPT that we can leverage them. Then let's check it out. Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank you. All right, we previously recorded a video that we talked about what is OpenAI and how it got added to Azure that is called Azure OpenAI and what are the benefits of using OpenAI models within Azure. So if you haven't checked that video yet, I would highly recommend you to check that out first because this video is gonna be a complimentary one for the one that we already recorded and talked about. So if you add that video to the top right of the screen and also in the video description that we talked about how you can get access to this Azure OpenAI and get to this portal that I am already opening it for you. And we talked about right of different models that are enabled within Azure OpenAI, how you can deploy them, what are the pros and cons of each, the price component, so on and so forth. So check that out. And now here we are, assuming that you're already aware of all those components we talked about before, then this video we're gonna focus on how you can get access to ChatGPT with Azure OpenAI, which just a couple of days ago, I think three or four days ago before the time that I'm recording this video, which is today, March, I think 12th. So this is my Azure OpenAI portal. I already got access to within the way that I showed you in the previous demo. And here I am. And as you can see, this is something new that we didn't see in the previous video when I was recording this. So chat GPT playground in parentheses preview. So the time that you're watching this video or you're trying to follow the material here, you might see that this is no longer in preview, but because this is pretty fresh and that's how I decided to record this video for you, this is in preview mode. So Let's just start the playground of ChatGPT. This is the piece that we have been all waiting for. We got access to public ChatGPT. You can go just ChatGPT login. We already played around with, but we have never had a chance to have the API for ChatGPT to be able to call it for, let's say within our application codes or here even on Azure. So you can say this is the overall playground that I have for ChatGPT. And the nice thing here that has been added, which you didn't have this within public access chat GPT and the portal that we have all uh, tested called assistant setup. So what does that mean here? Let's go one by one and see what are these pieces here that help us to complement our experience with chat GPT in Azure OpenAI. So for assistant setup, here you can 
identify or sort of specify what is the identity of your chat GPT model. For example, if you want to have um, a marketing writer assistant to support you, which is on backend of course chat GPT, you can define the identity of your model as a marketing writing assistant. So as soon as I switch to that setup, that means right now I am sort of introducing a new sort of character for my chat GPT model. And check that out, system automatically uh, provided a sample for me that if you want to have this model as your marketing writing assistant, this is what you need to tell to the model. You are a marketing assistant, you help come up with creative content ideas and content like marketing emails, blog posts, tweets, ad copy, so on and so forth. So that's a great way to start defining an identity for and character for my model immediately from here before even just start talking with ChatGPT and call through API. What else? So these are different sort of examples of assistant setup. If you, let's say, want to have this model as your hiking recommendation chat, but here's an example here. But you can certainly go with yours or create an empty example. That means now you can write anything. Like say, I want you to be MG assistant in recording tech or ML videos. I don't think you will understand what is MG, but just an example, right? Okay, so what else? Some of these examples, I think the one, let me see. Yes, for example, this is a tax chatbot. Not only it will generate the system message for you, which is sort of defining again your, the character of the model, but also here it will give you some few shot examples. So what is few shot? Instead of immediately starting working with, working with your model, you can start with providing some examples to the model with some possible questions that you're gonna provide and what is the ideal answer, right? So with that way, you can tell to ChatGPT that this is the way that you need to interact with my inputs and here are some few examples, which is called few shot learning. So here I am specifying, for example, a potential question that I can ask as an example, when I have tax chatbot as my assistant setup. For example, when do I need to file my tax buy? And what's gonna be the answer? Well, in 2023, blah, 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 this is the time that you need to fill out the tax. It actually just reminded me I have to fill my tax too. <laughs> Good example. So, this is just an example. That means you can even add more input and output examples for this specific scenario. Or let's say, you know, you wanna go with a very empty example. Let's say, again, you need MG Assistant as an example. And then here I can add a few short examples. For example, uh, give me the topic of next week video. And then here I can provide an answer to tell that, well, the next video can be this and that. Again, just as an example. So I'm specifying some few short examples for the assistant, which is gonna be mine. So that's about the assessment setup. This is something also pretty cool. I think even in the portal preview mode of ChatGPT with OpenAI, you can see a similar thing, but in Azure OpenAI, I found it pretty nicely designed and it's something beyond just calling ChatGPT. You have these flexibilities to set up your ChatGPT. Chat session. This is the one that we all are familiar with. This is similar to what we had with public, publicly available ChatGPT portal that you can type anything and it can also provide you the answer. So easy, right? Wow, it is giving me a language in Chinese, I think. Interesting. I have no clue what I played around with at the beginning. Let's see, hi, how are you? Okay, interesting. Let me check if I go with the default assessment setup and if I ask him, hi, how are you? Do we have this? Okay, interesting. I think when I was setting up my assistant and adding some examples here, it got something wrong, but that was very surprising. Live recording. Anyway, so this is the place that I can interact with ChatGPT, but let's dig into some parameters on the right side. Now for the deployments, you won't see the name ChatGPT within the available models of Azure OpenAI because the model on backend is called GPT-35 Turbo. This is the new one that you have in the list of models. If I go to the model section, these are the models that I showed you in the other video, but we didn't have Turbo. 
this is the new one added and this is the one that ChatGPT uses. So you need to make sure that this is already deployed. Now coming back to ChatGPT, and this is the model that I have, certainly I'm gonna use it, and max response. So there's currently a limit a number of the tokens per ChatGPT response, which is 4,096 token, that include your model input or user query and the model output. So the sum of your model output and the query, which is your input, can go maximum 4,096 tokens, right? And one token is roughly, it's an estimation, is four characters for a typical English text to give you an idea how many text or words you can have with that number of tokens, right? You can limit that if you want to, to make sure, for example, with the total number of input and output, you won't go more than 3,000 tokens to sort of tune the, the behavior of the model. Now, temperature and topic. So both of these parameters has been added here to let you adjust how much you want to be your model precise and sharp to the point or let model generate some potential randomness or likelihood words because that will let the model to be more creative. You can get creative outcomes if you let's say tune this parameter or get some random hours, numbers or sorry words. So it doesn't necessarily mean if you move this temperature all the way up or down, you always have that dedicated behavior, but it is still something that you can tune the randomness or the creativeness of the model. So here says lowering the temperature means that the model will produce more repetitive, but increasing the temperature will also increase the creativity and unexpected results. The same thing for top heat, that's another parameter. They sort of do the same thing for you, but on back end, the way that you're tuning the model, the output of the model, behavior of the model is slightly different. So they're recommending that if you want to adjust that creativeness that we talked about, you can just either increase top P or temperature, but do not manipulate both. That's what has been added here. So a stop sequence. Your model needs to know a specific character that how when your prompt is stopped and this is good when you call the API of ChatGPT, which I'm going to come to that shortly. And past messages included. This is also very important because as all we know, ChatGPT will understand and perceive the, 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 the flow of conversation and your historical conversation with the model. If you ask your question number one and then two and three, it knows what were your previous questions and know the context. So here we can limit how many messages and inputs you had to the model in the past to be historically considered for the model to come up with the answer of your new query. For example, here uh, it says max is 10, but I can certainly make it to all the way, I think 20 or one. That means any inquiry that I have for the model is regardless of what I asked previously prior to that question. That can be also a use case. And here, the nice thing here is with adding all these justifications, potential inputs, and even remember this system message that you write down, that include as a token, it, it will grab some of the token numbers that you have from the total limit. So that's how we can see here how much of the current token limits you have used and how much is left to give you sort of an idea how far you are from that limit. So moving on, one thing I wanted to highlight as well, which is this is a playground. This is a UI, but you certainly go beyond just a UI to work with these models. You're going to call them through API, let's say through your um, Python application that you have, which is out of this event platform. And you want to know how you can call these models and having all these capabilities in a code. The nice feature here, th here is view code. So I just paused the recording to clean up all the stuff that we're testing. We just clicking on clear chat. And here, what I'm gonna do, I wanna show you how we can enable the code behind this playground. So let's say I wanna go with, um, I think it was the tax chatbot that has not only a system message, but also some few short examples. To see if you wanna code this with all the parameters on the live site, how it's gonna look right. So I click on view code and here you can see that it is the code in Python that calls this ChatGPT API through the API key that I have. And the prompt here, which this is actually the, the sequence that I talked about here, that tells this is the time that your, uh, your input or prompt start, but it starts with the system assistant that, that I have on the top here. You are an IRS chatbot whose primary goal, and there you go, the same thing is here all the way let me find when it ends with this i am ends uh stop sequence which is i think here there you go 
and then the few shot examples also had been added here as well for example this is what your user gonna ask and this is an example but this is the few shot examples that i told you what they are and they are also added here again with the same stop sequence that we have so starting for example here's the question that we have here and then with end and start again this is the answer of the assistant as an example so i have included these in my prompt and of course you certainly want to have your own query after that setting up your own prompt that's going to be a question from chat gpt plus some settings that we can specify here for example temperature max token the exact same thing that we had in the ui is now added to the code and the stop sequence which is already added here as i am indeed so the model can understand where the sequence of your assistant setup few short examples and your query gonna get the start and finish so that's all again this is in preview and got recently added this is as of now that i'm recording this video these are the capabilities and again we talked about how we can get access to but this is just the beginning of our possibilities now we have got the best of the llm models within openai which is called ChatGPT, which mesmerized everybody with the capabilities and now it is added with azure in azure with all these components running settings that you can tune few shot examples assistant setup that you can already implement them within azure openai Check that out. If you have already got access to it, you can give it a try, but certainly the features model is going to get evolving as long as OpenAI produce more models, the settings got get, will get enriched and new models potential will add it to Azure OpenAI. And I'll do my best to make sure I keep you posted with any recent features coming in as this one, which just got cooked a couple of days ago before I record this call. Thank you all. And that's it. If you want to focus 100%, ask yourself, with your goals and passions, how you can serve people. And if you really have this goal, you will get motivated. If you're not motivated, you have got the wrong goals, my friends. Dream big, believe in yourself, and take action. Until next video, 